Hi, I'm Agent Lee, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a smart doorbell. Now, even though these devices do a lot of things, it doesn't mean they're complicated. They're actually pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. For this demo, I'll be using a Ring Video Doorbell 3 and a Google Pixel 4 smartphone. These steps might be a little different depending on your devices. Here's what you'll need. The app for your doorbell installed, your smartphone, and the name of your wireless network along with the password. When you're ready to get started, go ahead and plug the battery in using the cable that it came with. It doesn't come with a wall charger, so I'll use one that I already have. A green and red light will show you that it's charging. You'll know when it's done when the red light turns off and only the green one is on. Once it's charged up, just unplug the battery and put it inside the doorbell from the bottom and push until you feel it click. Now go to your smartphone and open the doorbell's app, which for me is going to be Ring. Tap on Create Account or Log In and follow the instructions to sign into the app. Since this app is going to help keep your home secure, it's a good idea to make sure your password is strong and that you're not using the same password you use for other accounts or services. If you want some pointers, we have another Tech Tips video to help you pick a strong password, along with a Tech Tips article that covers two-factor authentication for an extra layer of security. Check out both links below. When you're logged in, follow the instructions in the app to add a doorbell to your account. For my Ring doorbell, I can just scan the code on the back. Once the app knows which doorbell is yours, you can choose how you'd like the app to use your phone's location, add the address where the doorbell will be installed, and even name it. So if you're installing multiple doorbells, your app can tell them apart. Ring has a few pre-made options to pick from, but you can also create your own by tapping custom. For this one, let's go with front door. My app is telling me that it's time to install the battery. Since mine is already fully charged and installed, I'm just going to hit continue. Next, the app wants to establish communication between the doorbell and the phone. In the app, tap on the button that corresponds to the doorbell's light. For example, my light is spinning, so I'm going to tap the light is spinning button. When that process is complete, it's time to select the wireless network that the doorbell will connect to, enter the password, and hit continue. Your app will now highlight some of the features. Read through these, and then when you're ready, tap on the button to move to the next step. You should now see the Setup Successful screen, which means, you guessed it, your doorbell has successfully connected to the network. The doorbell might need to install a few updates at this point, which is a good thing. It's just making sure you're getting all the latest security and features available from Ring. Once the updates are complete, tap on Physical Installation for instructions on how to install your new doorbell. It'll walk you through the process and will include instructions for both wired installation or battery power. If you get stuck during the installation process or you're not comfortable doing it, you can reach a Geek Squad agent using the link in the notes below. We'll be happy to help. Once your doorbell is installed, it's time for the fun stuff. Tap the Motion Settings option and tap Optimize Motion Settings. It'll ask you a few questions about the location where the doorbell is installed. These questions are important because they'll determine how many alerts you receive. For this demo, I'm going to say yes, that my door faces a street and is further than 30 feet away. The next screen will ask about motion verification, which allows your device to make its own decisions on whether the motion it detects is important enough to record and send you a notification. Side note, I'm using the Ring Video Doorbell 3. The Video Doorbell 3 Plus has a pre-roll feature that shows you four seconds of video before the motion is detected, so you get a bit more context. All right, back to it. These doorbells do a great job of making decisions, so I'm going to leave that enabled. The next screen allows me to adjust motion zones, which are really useful. You can even set them up to detect people, so you don't get notified every time a rabbit hops through your yard. You can see the areas where motion detection will be on or off, and you can adjust them. Just tap on each zone to enable or disable motion detection, and then hit continue. Next, you can adjust the sensitivity of the motion detection with a slider, left for less sensitive, or right for more sensitive. When you're ready, tap Save. You can also choose Frequent, Standard, or Light to adjust the amount of motion capture and the number of notifications. 
If your doorbell is running on battery, more recordings and notifications will shorten the battery life. So for this demo, I'm going to choose Standard and tap Save. You can adjust these settings at any time down the road if you're getting too much information or not enough. Once your settings are saved, tap the Continue button, and then Additional Settings. These are optional, but if you'd like to share access with your friends and family, now's a great time. Just tap on Share This Device and type in their email address. Once you've entered all the addresses, hit Continue and follow the instructions. We have more tips on how to grant access to your Ring camera in one of our other videos. Again, check out the link in the notes. For this demo, I'm going to skip this section and tap I'm done. At this point, you'll see that on your dashboard, there's a snapshot from your doorbell. Cool, right? Just tap on the snapshot view of the doorbell. Depending on how you've set up your doorbell, you'll see a timeline of events. From here, it's easy to share those video clips on social media or email and get a live view of the camera's feed. To see a live feed, tap the Live button and wait for the image to activate. If you'd like to look at events, scroll left and right on the timeline. These color-coded areas are events that were recorded by the doorbell. To view any of them, simply tap it. To find an event even faster, use the filter options. Let me show you how. Tap on the filter button in the bottom right. Then tap filter events by type, such as missed rings, motion, or the live view type. These are missed rings, or instances where someone rang the doorbell and you didn't respond through the app. These are times when motion, including a person, was detected. Whenever you use the live view feature, a clip can be found here. And this is where your favorites are stored. You can favorite any activity by simply sliding right and pressing the star button. While we're here, when you find the event you're looking for, you can share the recording by tapping share. You can also select the way that you'd like to share it. If you do decide to share an event, keep in mind that everyone who clicks on that link can view the recording. And there you have it, set up and ready to go. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give it a like. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tech tips from Best Buy. Thanks for watching.